Did you think the DeLorean was the best uh, choice for, for the movie? Um, yes, I do think the DeLorean was the best choice. There is some scientific reasons in terms of it doesn't have a magnetic, magnetic field because it's mostly stainless steel. Um, and it was a very, very futuristic, uh, timeless design. Um, there is some interesting background in that if you look at this at the history of John DeLorean and and when all of the things were were taking place to drive him out of business you have to also keep in perspective that the hot rod dual turbocharged DeLorean was was the, the competition was aware of that back in late 81 they were also aware of the script for this movie in late 82 the actual script for the Back to the Future movie was submitted to 43 different financing homes, houses before someone agreed to actually produce the movie. So that script was on on the strip for a long time. And don't kid yourself, car makers know from the Herbie days to all of the other movie cars that once you have a movie car of your car, you sell a lot of cars. So we're not saying that the, that the script was part of the story of what happened to John DeLorean, but don't ever assume that it wasn't part of the piece to the puzzle. When the script was originally developed, there was another movie uh, where they used a phone booth as a time machine. And the original concept was to compete with a phone booth, they were going to use a refrigerator. Uh, the problem with that is kids would lock themselves in the refrigerator and they would die. So that idea quickly died. Uh, and after all, a refrigerator is a lot cheaper than a car. So, you know, going from a refrigerator to a car basically increased the cost of production almost $250,000. So it, it was actually a fairly major decision to do that. One of the things that happens in Hollywood is a thing called product placement. And in the Back to the Future movie, Pepsi was prominent, uh, Pizza Hut was prominent, California Raisins was almost prominent. So there's different vendors were coming to Hollywood saying, hey, uh, put my thing in the movie and I'll give you a, a lot of money. So Ford Motor Company came to Universal and said, if you put or change the time machine from a DeLorean to a Mustang, we'll give you $75,000. And back in the 80s, $75,000 was a lot of money and basically covered the cost of two days of shooting. But Bob Gale was absolutely honest to DeLorean and said to the product placement bean counters, Doc Brown does not drive a fucking Mustang. And when Bob Gale told this story at a DeLorean car show, the next morning they were selling these t-shirts that said Doc Brown doesn't drive a fucking Mustang. Great story. Is there any more, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff, you know, about the movie? Uh, yeah, I've known Bob Gale for a number of years. Uh, one of the interesting stories that they talk about, uh, or they began talking about three years ago, is there actually was an alternative ending to the movie that they would have used if they had another million dollars. And instead of the lightning bolt as the source of energy, it was going to be a nuclear bomb. Uh, because at that time nuclear bomb testing was uh, very active and they actually did some original storyboards of the DeLorean and, and Marty driving towards the bomb and they even shot some early scenes of people uh, at the test site uh, going and looking at where the original atomic bomb went off and then Marty appears with the DeLorean back in 1955. Um, so if we were to do a true Back to the Future movie, that would have actually been the correct ending. The story about all this uh, setup and stuff, what, what can you tell me about that shortly? Well, it, it is interesting if you read the trial record, because the key FBI agent who, who orchestrated the fake bank and the fake records and the fake loan, he turned against the state and testified for John DeLorean and said it was a a total fake, total setup. There was never any mention of any cocaine until we put it in front of him. It appeared to be a legitimate bank deal. And because this came out in the trial, the judge said, you're acquitted. There's no valid charges here. And that's what really happened. But the news media never reported it. 
there, there is another interesting s story about the bankruptcy. And anytime something goes into bankruptcy, it goes into court. And the bankruptcy judge has the option of selling the assets to, to uh, liquidate the company and satisfy the debtors. So four people, four investors appeared before the court offering to buy the DeLorean Motor Company and put it back into production and produce both DeLoreans and Morgans on the same production line. However, since the loan came from the British government, Margaret Thatcher had to approve it, and Margaret Thatcher did not like DeLorean, so she wouldn't approve the sale of the company and the assets. She wanted to make sure DeLorean was put out of business, and that's what happened. It wasn't a question of money. It wasn't a question of investors. It was strictly a question of politics. But she put a lot of money before in the project. The British government, along with the Irish government, funded DeLorean by, in terms of the $200 million to put his company into business. And ironically, by shutting down DeLorean, it actually cost the British government more to put those employees on unemployment than had they left him in business.